three two one we are live welcome welcome everybody welcome <laughs> to uh come follow with us this is not vision to success I, I was about to say that and that is not it no it is not it um yeah welcome everybody we feel a little off today because i was actually on time <laughs> <laughs> So it's not the usual banter, it's not the usual, like, feeling flustered, so... Yeah, yeah, you're giving me nothing to work with this morning. I guess this is what it feels like to just be on time. Yeah, and, <laughs> and Maria is so holy, like, she's got this ray of sunshine just right behind her. That's how, that's how perfect she angels. is. Listen, angels, on my right hand, on my left side, on, like, in front of me, behind me, everywhere. I'm talking about the spotlight behind you on the wall. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> I, I know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> well, this is a very special. Like What's that? Uh, sorry, go ahead. Yes. No, 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 I'm no, just I'm saying. Just, like, my lighting. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, this is a very special podcast. Uh, it's a come follow with us. I was actually talking. We had some people over yesterday, um, and we, the, we, we were talking about the come follow with us. So for those who are joining us, uh, welcome. This is a Christian-based podcast where we um, in our church the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints um, we have a study guide and um, and it's a weekly study guide and so maria on her own time she studies it i study it on my own and uh and then at the end of the week we just come together and then we just talk about and share the thoughts and what we've learned and things like that mm -hmm. So there are certain people that have been following us since inception, and uh, they like the fact that we changed the name from Come Follow Us to Come Follow With Us. Yeah? Yeah. That's awesome. And, and the, biggest, the biggest reason why, and I think it, it fits perfectly with our theme today, which is the Easter, Easter theme, right? We don't want you to follow us. We're not perfect. We're like... Uh, Perfect. Yeah, we are. Well, me, I'm really, really close. I'm just right around the corner. I can see it. Like, I can see it. That. Maria's got a long way to go. She's, yeah, she's 100%. just going to, she's going to be late like, <laughs> when it comes to like the perfection I'm train. I'm holding to that rod. I'm like, my fingers are just like. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, but no, I'm, I'm far from perfect. And uh, so, yeah, we don't want you to follow us. We we want you to come follow with us. So yeah. the people, the people, the person that you should be following is Jesus Christ. And so that's what our podcast is all about. It's just the great redeemer and uh, all the great things that he's done for us. Yeah, for sure. And I'm so excited because it's Easter. It's such yeah. a wonderful time of the year. Yeah. I was talking to someone yesterday and they're like, we should be making Easter as big as Christmas. And I'm like, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and I love I love those two seasons, the Christmas and Easter, because it's the one time and I don't doesn't matter what denomination, Christian denomination you are, we come together and we we accept this one fact that Christmas he he was born for us and Easter he died for us. Everything else in between the doctrines, the principles, the the whatever, uh, they are they subside because this is the one this is the one hill we can all Christians like die on, right? Like uh, that we all agree. And so we yeah. just, which is actually pretty cool. Tomorrow. Yeah. Today's Saturday, tomorrow, Sunday. Uh, we've been invited to a church, to our neighbor's church and uh, at 630. And we're going to go see, uh, I think he's Pentecostal. <clears throat> yeah. And we're going to go as a family. We're going to go see their service, uh, their Easter service. So yeah, we're excited about That's that. Amazing. I love visiting other churches too. Just yeah. the, the different dynamics. is always awesome to see. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's get right into it. Um, for those who want to follow along with us, I've included the link in our description. And so that will take you right into the manual. And um, yeah, so let's get right into it. Do you want to give us the recap? Sure. So in this week's reading, we go under three different questions. We talk about the resurrection of Christ. Mm -hmm. And it says, because of Jesus Christ, I will be resurrected. And it gives us scriptural references in the Book of Mormon. Um, and then we go into the second set because it talks about Jesus Christ taking upon himself our sins, pains, and infirmities. I love, like, I love this whole section because it honestly helps you to see the deep love that Jesus Christ had for us or mm. has for us, actually, because he lives, right? Yeah. And to see someone who is perfect, who didn't harm anyone, who didn't do anything wrong, be so gracious in loving and forgiving and setting such a 
amazing example for us and then not only that not only did he set an example for us but he was like you know what i know you're gonna struggle so i want to feel what you feel so i can be there for you and i can provide you a way yeah. so that's um yeah that's pretty much it so that's it was that's pretty much what we're diving deep into um the last section talks about jesus christ cleansing us and helping us to become perfect right and in, in our journey to perfection so yeah yeah and, and so and just to get right into this um one thing that you have to understand that because of the fall two deaths were introduced because of the fall the uh, the first death was the uh, the physical death which is the separation of body and spirit and when we talk about the fall we're talking about and I'm partaking of the fruit right and so there was the physical death, which is the separation of body and spirit. And then there was spiritual death, which is the separation of spirit and God. So us and God. So those are the two deaths that were introduced. Spiritual death and physical death. And both is a separation of something. When Christ was introduced into the world, he mended both deaths. One was free. And the other one, it has to be earned. So for the physical death, we will all be resurrected, which is the reuniting of the body and spirit from the fall. And the spiritual death has to be earned. And that is the reuniting of spirit and God, or children and God. And yeah. where if we do what we need to do, and if we accept Christ's uh, atonement, and then we do certain covenants and certain commandments, and we follow and we talked about enduring to the end, that is not just a one-time process, but it's a continual thing. And then if we continue, whatever shortfall we have, through the grace of Christ, he fills in the blank. But we have to do our, our part too, right? And so then that's earned. You can't just sit back and just be like, ah, I'll repent later, or you know what, I'll do whatever I want, and then Christ is just gonna do the balance. That's not how it works. We have to, we have to earn. It's an earned salvation, and so, uh, and then that's so that so Christ, while well, Adam gave us those two deaths, Christ gave us the two um, answers. He gave us the two uh, salvations, right, or the two things. Yeah, so I guess it's the difference between salvation and exaltation. Salvation right. is free for everybody, right? We're all going to be able to be resurrected, or see, like have our physical bodies, and then you have the concept of exaltation, which is the ability to be like to be with God. Mm -hmm. And I think it's incredible that He gave us a pathway, right? Not only did He give us the opportunity to come to this earth, but He gave us the ability to have a path in order to return back to Him and receive the blessings, not just in the next life when we're going to be see Him, when we're going to see Him, like physically see Him with our eyeballs, I guess, and be able to touch Him and hug Him, yeah. uh, but be able to feel close to Him now. And I think that I think sometimes I don't know, maybe it's just my my perception, but I'm like, is there's so much beauty in the here and the now when we choose to live the covenants when we choose to follow the commandments when we choose to do our best to be with like to be with heavenly father and jesus christ the blessings in the immediate and the here and now yeah. are incredible i'm like i can't imagine like how good things are here how more amazing they will be in the life to come yeah so. yeah um it's and again it's one of these things like this is where we unite as a people right doesn't matter what what denomination you are, anything like that, like this is, we, we believe, we believe in his birth and we believe in, in his sacrifice, his, his eternal sacrifice. And then we, we can all stand together. It doesn't matter about, you know, what race, color, creed. Um, if yeah. you are a Christian, it doesn't matter the denominations. This is, we, we truly believe in his resurrection and what happened yeah. this week. And so it was, it's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Favored him. I'm I'm so happy that it got mentioned in this section, but uh, I know that my redeemer lives. So, what? Which one is your favorite? Do you have a favorite verse? Favorite verse? Uh, yeah. It, there's four verses, right? Yeah. Uh, um, I, it it's okay. So, one of my, my I think one of my favorite verses the the last one because okay. every time that has gone sung by other a congregation or the mormon tabernacle choir uh they add a little bit of oomph to that final verse 
and so it's part of our program this Sunday. And mm-hmm. so I told Sandra, like our pianist, and I'm like, listen, when we get to that, because she plays the organ, and I'm like, when we get to that final verse, you gotta like, I don't know what you do with the organ, you pull the plugs and you do all this, but it's gotta be like, Duh! and I want that whole <laughs> flip and just pure Phantom of the Opera style thing, right? She goes, I got gotcha, you, you right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. She's like, I got gotcha. you. We did it last year. I could not get through that final verse. Yeah, I couldn't. <clears throat> and then one of the reasons why it's so tender to me is because. So on my mission, um, and this is why, and I, I don't want to get too emotional here, but on my mission, in my first area, I served in that area for about <clears throat> for about almost eight months, which is very long for one area. That's yeah. almost half of your mission, right? Yeah. I and guess there was some stuff you needed to learn in that area. <laughs> oh, like yeah, it, but it was it was it was wonderful. Anyways, and so uh, I served for, and then. When I got to my second area on my mission, I I struggled in the sense that I did not want to be in that second area because I I wanted to be back with the people, the friends who I was teaching, and I wanted to be with them and stuff like that. So I really, really struggled. I, I did not want to be in that second area, and I was almost trunky or homesick for my first area. Mm-hmm. And then at a zone conference or zone meeting, we sang this hymn. And in the middle of the hymn, I just started crying, like absolutely crying. And then the, the, the message or the thought that came to my mind was you're missing the point of the mission. It's, it's not about, it is about the people, but it isn't about like the congregation. It's about the savior, letting people know that he lives. And, and then, so as soon as that happened, I it almost like it snapped me out. Like it kind of like, Hey, wake up. You're here for him. And, uh, and I'm like, anyways, and that just changed the rest of my mission for like the rest of my mission. Right. I was like excited to talk about Christ. So I love, this is my favorite hymn of all time. It's really anytime that I've found myself in a dark place, this is the hymn that brings me back. Yeah, I have. So I really love this hymn, but I think my favorite hymn of all time is I Stand All Amazed. That one, mm. every time I sing that one, tears. I'm like, <laughs> you know what this one though? Tears. Yeah. Uh, my favorite verse is, so it does have the four verses, but on the second verse, the second uh, part of the second verse, it says, he lives to silence all my fears. He lives to wipe away my tears. He lives to calm my troubled heart and he lives all blessings to impart that part always like touches my heart because yeah. whenever i'm feeling inadequate whenever i'm feeling scared all normal emotions of being a human being it's kind of like that that's gonna come and go but your constant is christ and he yeah. will be there when you have those feelings so yeah even oh, now you, i just want to i just well, want to look up now i stand all amazed anyway go ahead no no <laughs> even even you reading right now that verse i could i could feel like you know like the like the tears coming up my throat, just like <laughs> they travel up. Yeah, I'm like, I don't like it. I don't like it. But um Okay, listen, so we if we're gonna talk about that one, we have to talk about I stand all amaze. So this this hymn has been my all time favorite, but my like I guess the the time that it kind of penetrated my heart is when we came back from COVID and it was the first Sunday that we were able to sing, like actually sing out loud at church. Cause remember COVID, we were all online. Then we came back, then there was like guidelines where we couldn't sing. So we would yeah. just listen to hymns. And then at a certain point we were actually able to sing, still had to do social distancing. And this is the hymn that I was like, it just felt so powerful to be able to, to sing. And okay, so I'm gonna read you just the just the first verse, right? But well, I have like, I have it here too. So go ahead, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it says, um, "I stand all amazed at the love Jesus offers me, confused at the grace that so fully He profits it. He proffers me. I tremble to know that for me He was crucified, that for me a sinner He suffered, He bled and died." Hmm. And I'm, and then like the second verse when he's like when when you're like to rescue a soul so rebellious and proud as mine that he should extend his great love unto such as I sufficient to own to redeem and to justify. Ah, oh, hmm. my heart. Honestly, I just I feel like I need to go have a good cry after this. <laughs> I know. I'm like I'm starting <laughs> to like <laughs> this is just yeah yeah yeah. 
that's that's who Christ is, right? Like when we seek to know Him, when we seek to get like to have a deep connection with Him, yeah. and we just have a little bit. I think our understanding of Him is never going to be perfect because yeah. we're imperfect. So I don't think we're ready for that full blown like majesty. But I think as we continue to study Him and study His work, His character, His traits, His love for us, it just touches you in a different way, and you're like. Like for me, the fact that he's that it says to rescue a soul so rebellious and proud as blind, I'm like heck to the yes. Yeah. Like let's talk about how I've struggled so many times with pride, yeah. but yet he's still there, right? Yeah. Well, here's my favorite line. So if we're talking about favorite line, so this is the fourth line. Okay. He says, uh, "He lives, all glory to his name. He lives, my Savior is still the same. Oh, sweet the joy the sentence gives. I know that my Redeemer lives." He lives, a oh, glory to his name. He lives, my savior still the same. Oh, sweet, the joy the sentence gives. I know that my redeemer lives. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I mean, like, that's just, that, that's it, guys. Like, we should just end the high. <laughs> I There's know. There's more that we can say. <laughs> Yeah. I now want to go and listen to some hymns. <laughs> I know. This is amazing. Well, yeah. So that is pretty much uh, through the following verses, like Second Nephi nine, and uh, and and uh, and let's and um, yeah. So Second Nephi, through the verses here, it's pretty much talking about Christ, His redeeming, His redeeming love, everything that He's done for us, and so how He, uh, pretty much how He died for us, and so that we will be resurrected one more time, which is again. It is a it is a free gift. Doesn't matter how you've lived. It doesn't matter what's happened. You will you will live again. Yeah. So I have a question for you. One of the prompts on there is like, how do these truths about the resurrection affect the way you live? Like, what are how does it how does it impact Miguel Martinez and the way he lives, knowing all of these things about the Savior? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what? It's so. Truth be told the the resurrection uh and then this is this is me this is not doctrine this is not like uh this is not something that i want people to go and and uh and 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 profess this from a pulpit or anything like that for me <laughs> according to miguel martinez yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. for me for me while the resurrection is powerful which it is for me the atonement i've always focused on which 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 is the answer to the the first death the physical death right for me is not as powerful as the second the second salvation the second part the spiritual death that for me is takes precedence and so that's um i've always given priority to that part resurrection again we've all we're all going to resurrect doesn't matter how you lived your life every single one when christ resurrected that same day uh many tombs were open a lot of people came back um it doesn't matter if you lived a good life or a bad life salvation is a gift that's great that's awesome and while it is important and while it is a phenomenal gift the one that i've always always had a presence in my life was been was been exaltation is because of what he did it will give me an opportunity to live with my family again. And that has given me so much hope. Um, and it's really directed my life and how I should be living for me to be able to be a partaker of that gift. Because again, that that's an earned one that you have to do your part for it. It's not just it's not free cookies for everybody, right? It's like you have to you have to earn that one. So for me, that's the one that really takes precedence in my life. Yeah. Yeah. I love I think I think the resurrection is is it's so important, right? It's oh, part huge. Of the atonement. Yeah. That's how like that's the epitome of the atonement, the fact that he not only suffered for us, but he broke the bands of death. Yeah. And when I was answering this question during my scripture study, I'm like, Well, because of all like because of the atonement, because of his resurrection, because he gave up his life for me, I have faith, I have hope, I have the ability to be able to rely on someone who is constant in the scriptures yeah. we're told that god is the same yesterday today in the future right i'm like he is constant like everything else in my life will change but 
because of this gift, because of the knowledge that is available of him, I have hope, I have faith, I have the ability to continue my knowledge and my growth, and it can impact the way that I raise my kids, the way that I show up in this world, the type of friend that I have, the type of colleague that I may be, like if I'm in a workplace, right? So yeah. overall, it definitely has an everyday importance and impact in my life. Yeah. And, and again, and I just want to be double double down on how, and being this clear, I'm not saying that it isn't important, right? I don't want people to be like, oh my gosh, Brother Martinez doesn't believe in the resurrection. No, I believe in the resurrection wholeheartedly. We are to be judged in the flesh, and I believe in the resurrection. And I think it's an amazing, yeah. an amazing gift, right? To be okay, able to. Let's talk about how cool it is to be resurrected, and we're going to be perfect. So, whatever element we may have, like. Dude, I, I'm going to have a full mind, set of hair. I'm going to have a full set of hair. Like, that's. We're I, all going to be ripped. Yeah. <laughs> My mind, like, all muscular, super ripped. <laughs> <laughs> super ripped, no stomach, just a six pack, just six walking pack. around. Yeah, yeah. Listen, but I'm like, even having the, th like, just even if, you know, you struggle with any ailment, if you have a loved one that has any kind of disabilities, if you yeah. yourself have a disability, yeah. knowing that because of him, you will be resurrected with a perfect body, a perfect mind, right? So mm -hmm. it's pretty incredible. It's such a huge gift. Yeah. Yeah. So I believe in it. Yeah. So please, no rumors. Um, <laughs> the, the second part is the interesting thing is here. It says, Jesus Christ took upon himself my sins, pains, and infirmities. So, <clears throat> here's, here's the thing. So, there's, this has two parts to it, right? There is, there is, he took upon himself the sins, the pains, and the infirmities of the world. So, then, if we accept Christ, his suffering can pay uh, the requirements for for us to be able to, I don't want to say bypass that, but just to be able to live with, with God again, right? But the other one is, the second part to this is that, so he can sucker us better. Like he, he's gone through, every, so, and this is, this is what I want, I need everybody to, who's ever listening, is that you're not alone. The pains that you feel, the pain of loss, the pain of a family member, the pain of, uh, of not, getting that job the pain of a of a child going wayward like all of that stuff christ has already felt those pains and so when we go to him he can sucker us better like he can make us feel good uh, or he knows exactly what we're going through and then he can counsel us better because he's gone through those affirmities right and so yeah. that to me is huge to know that he did this he took on these pains that I'm having now purposely so he can be my friend and better counsel me in the future. To me, that, yeah. blows, that blows my mind out of the water that he voluntarily did this, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like I think about, you know, when you have a friend and your friend, like you and I, when we have spoken with regards to losing our dads, there's just a different connection because you've gone through it. I've gone through it. Although it was different, there's many aspects that were very similar. So we understand each other a little bit better, right? Yeah. As opposed to talking to someone who has never lost a parent. Yeah. So it's, it's just different. Even if a person wants to be there and wants to be supportive, if you've never really gone through the situation, sometimes it's really hard. Right. Yeah. But when you and I had connected with regards to our dads and we spoke and you helped me to get through a, like a hard season when I was losing my dad, it's almost it was it was like a little glimpse of what the savior does for us. Yeah. He's able to understand every single pain and suffering and to be able to be like, hey, I know how you feel inside and I can lighten your burden. Yeah. Um, and the, there's a there's a conference talk that's attached to this. Um, let me just pull it up. Sorry. Yeah. I was reading it. And uh, is so, it this one? Yeah. A living witness of the living Christ. Oh, I was going to so, say, no, no, as you were looking for, I was, uh, we have two comments here. I was going to just read those. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, oh. Um, so Rob Diltz, he's actually a brother from our ward. He says that his favorite hymn is, uh, or one of his favorite hymns, a poor way, a poor wayfaring man of grief. Oh my gosh, yes. That is a yeah. crazy, Again, crazy my hymn. eyeballs, like... I know. <laughs> my eyeballs, like... We had an activity yesterday in our ward. It was an Easter activity. Yeah. And in all honesty, I didn't anticipate how spiritual it was going to be. Because, I mean, 
it was you know with any activity it's stressful to set up there's a lot of moving parts going yeah. on there's there was a lot like a lot of our youth were participating a lot of our kids were participating and on wednesday when we rehearsed it was it was chaotic right yeah. so i was like you know what everybody's doing their best and whatnot right anyway when we went the spirit was so insane that my eyeballs like the whole time so people are like are you okay maria i'm like yeah this is just joy <laughs> so if, you, if you're ever out there you see me with tears in my eyeballs it's just joy yeah. <laughs> don't worry yeah um, and he also says here there is someone who uh, who knows how we're feeling which is what we've been talking about and how can we get through it uh and what are the steps and what are the steps will be so uh how to to how to get through it yeah, so we can talk uh, we can talk about that in a sec. Um, so you were saying so you found the talk? Uh, yeah, so it's uh, in the if you definitely worth a read. So please, please, please read this talk. It's amazing. It talks to the atonement. But the part that I really like is you know sometimes we reflect and we're like okay, sometimes we overcomplicate things and we're like how does the atonement really work in my life? Like how can mm. I see it bearing fruits, right? And I love the thing that it says here. It says uh, when. When was the last time you felt the sweet influence of the Savior's atonement in your life? So that's the question. And it says, this happens when you feel an exquisite and sweet joy come over you that bears witness to you and your soul that your sins are forgiven, or when painful trials suddenly become lighter to bear, or when your heart is softened and you're able to express forgiveness for someone who has hurt you, or maybe each time you notice your capacity to love and serve others has increased, or that the process of sanctification is making you a different person patterned after the savior's example i'm like that's just so mm. tangible ways that the resurrection the atonement has bare fruits in our lives and i think this gives i don't know it, to me it just gave me such a perfect example to be like oh my gosh some of this this has happened in my life so the atonement is working in my life yeah 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 and and I think to add answer Rob Dilt's here questions, how do we get through it, and what are the steps? Um, I think part of it has to do a, a big, huge part of it is what we talked about last week is about that whole the enduring to the end. Like it's not a white knuckling thing and just kind of like whatever. It's enduring to the end is going back and fulfilling step one, two, three, and four, the four, the the principles of the gospel, right? Which is faith faith in Jesus Christ, continual repentance baptism we can't get baptized every week but we can partake of the sacrament and continue to call upon the spirit and the promptings of the holy ghost as we go through prayer and as we live our life righteously or as we just seek guidance and then when we continue to repeat these four steps we are enduring to the end and we are partaking of the uh, the atonement of jesus christ and so that's how he can play a massive massive role right and that's what enduring to the end pretty much means right yeah, I, I agree. I'm like just kind of talking about my own personal hardships through life. Um, in specific, I know I always talk about my dad, but it was it was such a refining moment for me. And it was a moment where I really was able to see God's hand. It was probably the most beautiful and hard moment all at once. So just to give you a little background, if um, you don't know me, my dad passed away, I want to say a year and a half ago. It was a very aggressive type of cancer from the moment he was diagnosed. Actually, not even from the moment he was diagnosed. From the moment we knew something was going on to the moment he passed away, it was two months. So it was an insane ride, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I remember being in those like lows of lows and crying and being like, I don't know how I'm going to get through it. And one of the things that helped me was not to lose my connection with the Savior. So I read my scriptures every day, regardless of how I felt. And I, I got to be honest, some days I would feel edified, but some days I just didn't feel anything, right? I was, yeah. But I trusted that even though I don't feel anything, that the Lord was there. And I acted in faith, right? So what does faith look like when you're going through a trial? Well, faith looks like sometimes just taking the next step moment by moment and saying to yourself, if I don't know how this is going to work out, but I know I'm going to be okay. And at the beginning when my dad got sick, I remember fasting and praying that he would be healed, right? And that wasn't in the cards, obviously. It was for his progression that he needed He needed, He needed. needed to go to the other side because his growth was done here and he needed to continue to progress, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's having that moment that even though you're afraid, even though you're feeling all kinds of feels inside, going to the Lord, telling him, this is exactly how I feel. And then after that, going and stepping into the unknown with faith. Is that like 
I don't know how this is going to be, but I'm just going to do the next step. And I kid you not, like, the day he passed away was actually the day where my burdens were completely taken away. I woke up and I was like, I feel amazing. And that was the very day that my dad passed away. And I have not experience at sorrow i haven't experienced a deep pain or anything like that because i feel like my pain was so like insane for two months yeah. and so like crazy that the lord really blessed me with the ability to just experience he heal like he healed me really right so so I let think me, that's, let me mm -hmm. just tell you here that what you are doing what you did is actually part of one of the th one of the verses here in the scriptures right which when you were saying just triggered this here hebrew 4 14 through 16 focusing on verse 16 it says here uh, let us come boldly onto the throne of 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 grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need here's the biggest difference between what you did and what others may be doing that may not feel that comforting grace which is you actually came to christ to ask for your burdens to be lifted meanwhile a lot of i don't say a lot of people but there are some people out there who's like well where's god and i'm going through suffering and i'm doing this and i'm doing that but they're not actively searching or seeking right and tegan she always bothers me because and i i lose things sometimes like my keys or, or whatever and instead of instead of looking for them i'm like have you seen my keys and she goes have you looked for them and i'm like no just tell me where, where are the keys and she goes go look for them and then come talk to me i'm like that's not what that's not what it is right but like what am i doing to contribute to my own salvation like what am i doing to actively look for these keys right and so christ while he wants to come to us like we have to take steps towards him as well and then as we do that as we both meet in the middle or we just go to his throne he's going to be there ready and willing he knows what we're going through because he's gone through it he knows our pains because he's gone through it he knows our suffering he knows all of these things but we have to go to him and then it says here and again which exactly what you did let us therefore come boldly onto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need yeah it's so true i'm like and the thing is is like jesus christ and heavenly father 100 percent, they can alleviate everything they can change everything about the world right no. but then what are we learning right because for me that experience was a defining experience in my journey in my mm -hmm. faith in my families like i have seen that experience not only work miracles in my life but work miracles in my children's lives where yeah. they're actually able to talk about their grandparents because you know my like my it was a tough three years we lost both of my my husband lost both of his parents and then we, i lost my dad and so my children went through that but to see them be able to lean into the gospel to talk about their grandparents as if they're still living because they yeah. are still living right they're just yeah. in a different place but to even be able to joke around and talk about what they're doing and how like you know that's that's just beauty right there and there is like the gospel is the gospel is incredible because of that hope and yeah. uh, i just want everybody i just want to force everybody to do it <laughs> <laughs> which, <laughs> is, which is contrary <laughs> contrary to the gospel so don't if you're listening that's that's not the plan of salvation right there i know but legit i get it like i, I, I just want to i'm like live that yeah. i just there's so many sweet fruits in my life and in I my know. kids lives and i'm like listen but i like what rob said here is it says what well, our faith can also be asking and accepting service from others a hundred percent if people don't know what you're going through you cannot expect for them just to guess yeah. right and that I went through seasons in my life where I, I was very inward and very in my head that I was like, well, people should just know. As opposed to when we, my dad, when I was like w going through my dad, like, um, in the life, I kid you not, I told everybody. I told people in my ward. I shared a lot of testimonies with regards to it. I spoke about it a lot because I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, one, I can't do this alone. I was gone 10 hours a day and I have four young kids and you know like a lot of meals were planned for our family and it was incredible because I could 
focus on my family when I came home. Instead of cooking or cleaning, I had a lot of phone calls, I had a lot of support, and I had a lot of needs met because I shared what I was going through, right? Mm -hmm. So that's so, Rob, I'm like 100%, you have to be open, and sometimes we are scared to be vulnerable or to feel rejected, but in reality, it may happen, but you have to know that there's other people there that are more than willing and eager to help you. Yeah. And, and, and you, you did this, right? Like, I mean, cause, and you're a perfect example of asking for help and not asking for help. Cause when you were pregnant, you did not, like, nobody knew that you were pregnant and you didn't ask for, you didn't ask for any help. Like you should have showed up and with the I kid. I was so mad that yeah. nobody like helped me. <laughs> yeah. Like I, Anybody. yeah you just showed up to church one day with a kid in your hand and everybody's like what what is what happened here right where did the nine months go i that's gross like yeah. i was that angry person that i yeah. was like i was upset with mike because mike was like we should tell the relief society president that you're pregnant and you're gonna have the baby coming right mm. and i was like no 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 she should know right but i'm like how the heck is she gonna know yeah and then versus yeah. when your father passed or when he was going through whatever what he was going through you called me Right. And I was at the mall about yeah. to eat my Chinese food. And then, you know, and then you were like, you told me like, that. Yeah, you get you were a great support. Like, and mm -hmm. that's the thing. If you don't reach out to people, people can't be there for you. So, right. Right. Definitely. I, I love. So you can read comments as well. I didn't know that you were able to read comments on your end. I can read some comments. I don't think I can read them all. Like I can read Rob's uh, comment here that says, I prayed for help telling him that I can't do this and he sent someone or he will send someone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I literally had that. <laughs> yeah. I had uh, with Ruby. So I learned my lesson after Jesse about being all inward and angry. <laughs> so by my fourth, I was much better and people did know that I had a C-section, but Mike mm -hmm. was traveling and I had to take all the kids. It was like four kids that I had to take to a midwife appointment. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Right. And I prayed and I kid you not, someone from my ward actually messaged me and was like, what can I do for you today? And they came over it to care of my kids while I went to a midwife appointment with my, with Ruby. So yeah. I... I can firmly attest. I testify of that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. Um, so we, as we move on to the next section here, it says Jesus Christ can cleanse me and help me and help perfect me. So here's a hard one because I, back in the day, we had a, uh, a member and he's still active. Like he moved towards and like he moved in. So whatever, but this is, this was a concept that was very foreign to him and this is we're talking about a long standing member like his parents uh faithful worked at the temple went to the temple often um like like again this guy and till this day he's still like everybody who knows him loves him but this is the one thing where he really really struggled to not only understand but no not only accept but understand is how in your perfect imperfections how are you going to be perfect so he had a really hard time when christ said be ye there perfect even as i am so it's like did he just give you an impossible task right it's it's like is he playing games like what is happening here he's asking you to be perfect as he is but there's no way like there's no way for you, you will always be what they call an unprofitable servant you will never be perfect. You will always have a shortfall. So why? Um, so to his question is, why would he ask that? Why would he ask us to be perfect when we know that we're going to have a shortfall? <laughs> I'm like, I, th I don't remember who said this. I heard it from someone, but they were like, maybe we need to be perfect about being imperfect because when we're perfect about being imperfect, then we're humble. <laughs> we're like we know our shortcomings and we know that we need to go to the savior to help us uh to help us get to get through things so i kind of like that mm. way that this person worded it it was a couple weeks ago but i don't yeah. know i think it's a hard one i i see it, the thing with the scriptures and the gospel it's all about your life experience who you are your unique worldview so sometimes we are going to encounter things that are a little bit harder for us to understand sometimes to even align with but i guess that's where studying the concept of faith comes in or even being okay which it sounds like he was exactly being okay still 
being in the gospel until that moment that more like light comes into his life so yeah yeah so because i'm like what's your thoughts around it like what is your thoughts about perfection and like so i think of it i think of it as um a caterpillar and a butterfly mm-hmm. right so y- you've heard of the story of the caterpillar and the butterfly uh maybe remind me there was there was this man he's always he always wanted to see a caterpillar turn into a butterfly so he did his research uh, and he find out all the things that needed to happen and all the things that the caterpillar would, would need. So he goes into the woods, he, he finds a caterpillar, brings it back, puts it in an aquarium, puts the moss, puts the grass, puts the sticks, puts the leaves, and just gets everything set up. And he puts a, the, the caterpillar inside this aquarium. And he's all excited. He has the lights on, he has cameras on. And, you know, the caterpillar's eating the grass and enjoying his environment. And all of a sudden, starts to go up the stick, hangs upside down starts creating its its uh, cocoon um, and he's excited because he's about to see he's always wanted to see a a, a caterpillar turn into a butterfly um, and so it starts to happen it starts to happen and then it starts to wiggle after weeks there's a crack in the cocoon and he sees the butterfly inside the cocoon but the butterfly's struggling something's happening something's wrong and so the man reaches into the into the aquarium and he cracks open the uh, the cocoon to let to help the butterfly come out which which helped the butterfly came out however uh weeks or hours later the butterfly just it died and so what happens here is that um the two things happened number one there is a liquid that it's inside a caterpillar but deadly to a butterfly and so as the butterfly squeezes through the ca- uh, the cocoon it actually squeezes that liquid out out of its system it gets rid of it number one number two is that the struggle of trying to open up the cocoon what was happening is that the butterfly would build muscle mass into his wings to be able to then fly away and like whatever but the man took away the struggle of the of the of the butterfly wanting to help the butterfly kind of cracked it open and so this butterfly did not go through the two process of refinement didn't get rid of its 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 liquid and it, it did not build the muscle so the moral of the story is that there is strength in the struggle that the struggle itself will help us get to the next phase in our life and so, um, with this whole thing about not being perfect, we're not meant to be perfect in this life because as we struggle, it's going to allow us to get to the next phase in our life. However, as we accept Christ in our life and exactly what Rob says here, he will make us perfect, right? And so the commandment of be, you know, be as I am, it's like, that's our end goal that's where we're heading towards and as long as we have a goal we will suffer we will make we will fall we will whatever but then he's the destination not the journey right and so what we need to do is just continue doing our best life we need to continue making our mistakes as we continue to struggle we will we will acquire all the tools to be perfect and whatever shortfall we have because of what he's done for us, he will fill in the blanks. Yeah. I like it. I agree. Does I agree that make the sense? struggle is the way. Yeah. What was that? It was like a Bluey episode. I don't know. Yeah, Bluey, Bluey is a kid's show, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Dora. Yeah. And so when Dora was so finding not, her way. No, yeah. It's yeah. Not <laughs> it's not Dora. This is like next level. It's so good. If there's young parents out there, they will know. But it's like the best show. Anyway. So in one part, in one of these uh, shows, the dad goes to the daughter and it's like the struggle is not in the way. It is the way, right? He was trying to teach them about resilience and stuff. And I'm like, sometimes we see the struggle as being in the way of where we need to be. But in reality, it is the way that we need to be. Like it is the way that we need to head for our growth, just like the cocoon, right? Yeah. There are skills that need to be developed. There's spiritual skills. There's temporal skills. There's mindset. There is like even the people around you benefit from 
the struggle, especially if they see you work through it and overcome it. Yeah. Yeah. It, there's so much to it. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing is, right? Like, I mean, this is, this is why he came to earth is because there, there was going to be a shortfall. We were going to be in the negative. We were going to be unprofitable. And so he needed to come. And it says right there, the title, right? Jesus Christ can, can cleanse me and help perfect me. Right. And so, and then going back to what we were reading in Messiah is that as we, or certain animals I in Hebrew is that when we go to him, to the throne of grace, that he will help us. He will, he will fill in the blanks. Well, we have to definitely talk about Ether 1227, which is on oh the, on the read. Yeah. yeah. And it says, if men come unto me, I will show unto them their weaknesses. I give unto men weaknesses that they may be humble and that in my grace is sufficient for all men to humble themselves before me. For if they humble themselves before me and have faith in me, then I will make those weak things become strong unto them. That's I a love huge, that. Yeah, that's a huge scripture. Yeah, I'm like it's he gives us the pathway, right? I, yeah. I love the I love the scriptures because they give us the way. They give us the they give us the, the process, the to, I don't wanna say the to do's, it's not really a to do's, but they give us the the pathway of where we need to be, how we need to act and the things that we need to do. And then there it says, you know what? I gave you weaknesses. Those weaknesses are actually for your benefit, so you may be humble, so you may not get into your head and be like, Oh, look at me yeah. but rather that you will take a moment back self-reflect because a lot of growth comes from self-reflection and self-awareness so you need to have almost those two aspects in order to self-reflect and be like you know what i can't do this like i'm struggling hardcore with this and i need god i need jesus christ in my life to help me to see a different way and he will make those weak those weak things strong onto me right so i had um i had an experience recently and you know how we had leadership right uh, last week on saturday yeah what sorry okay sorry oh, sorry no, no, that no. I, I was i was distracted by a comment go ahead um you know how we had leadership last week right yeah 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 so i had youth leadership and in all honesty it was wonderful like i love the young woman's take presidency because they do such a fabulous job with yeah. like make helping us to feel love helping us to feel the savior but i kid you not like i came out of there not in a good place <laughs> <laughs> and it was not because of the leaders in any means, but I had to do some hardcore reflecting in how I've been like in my calling. And so then I started having these thoughts where I'm like, am I a hindrance to the youth? Am I a hindrance to how the youth are growing and all that stuff? And those thoughts kind of stuck with me for a few days. And I had to get real humble, in all honesty. I, oh my gosh, my kids are cleaning up like I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, it's the 8, 830 cleanup crew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The, the well, help, let me just ask them not to do it. <laughs> the help just arrived, yeah. <laughs> well, you know at that point my kids do chores at 8.30. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, hold on, let me just tell them to uh, yeah. hold on. So if you don't know what's happening here, Maria is just literally chastising the heck out of her children. She is screaming and swearing and... <laughs> I swear. <laughs> yeah, and then I'll come back to the podcast and be like, yeah, about that spirituality. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that about hindering the children? So you were saying, yeah, go ahead. Um, anyway, so long story short is that I, during a few walks, I felt like I felt like I needed that moment of crisis mm. in my faith, in my calling. It wasn't in my faith, but it was like in actually questioning I feel like questioning is okay. Like questions, that's how the gospel was built, through questions, right? Right, right. Um, but I had, I, w I was questioning a lot of the things that I was doing. But through those walks, I really had to come into the Savior and be like, hey, you know what? Like, I'm struggling. I don't know if I'm doing what you want me to do or if I'm in my mind creating. You know what you said last week that really helped me is that we are focused more on the program rather than the people. Yeah. And that's the thought that I had. I was like, am I focusing more on the program and the logistics, the admin part, than in the program? Am I creating this big to-do list when in reality, like President Nelson asked us to do what is needful and not to run before, like, run more than we can handle and whatnot? Yeah, yeah. So as I was reflecting to that, I kid you not, the Lord was like, Maria, he's like, um, he's like, what did he say? He's like, do what is needful. And then he, and then he actually made me think about my ministry. <laughs> he was like, "You're overcomplicating things. You need to focus on your ministry." 
and wow. I heard I was like Roger that I've been struggling so hard with my ministering because I've overcomplicated it I yeah. thought that I have to have this incredible relationship from the get-go and that I need to know all the needs and all these things and I got in my head and in and, and then I also thought to myself you know what I'm fulfilling a calling technically I'm ministering here and I minister at church and I'm involved with like all these aspects but I haven't been actually fulfilling one important aspect, which is ministering, right? Yeah, yeah. So sure enough, after that, I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to worry about the how. I'm just going to do it. So I set up my first ministering like um, like appointment. I took Raquel with me, and it was wonderful. It was like I was so exhausted throughout the day, and I went and did my ministering um, uh, visit. And then I had such a sense of like energy after, right? And I was like, I get it. Like sometimes I overcomplicate things because I – I just, in my mind, I want to create this, like, amazing program for the youth, but the Lord has already created an amazing program. There's nothing more that I can do to enhance this program. What I need to do is follow His lead. And yeah. even with serving in the church, ministering, like, there's different capacities that we serve, but within those different capacities, those skills that we gain, those blessings that we we learn are, like, transferable to other parts in our gospel yeah. journey, right? Yeah. So, anyway, a little example of how my weakness turned into something that I was, like, okay this is where i need to head and this is what i need to change well so here so here's a quick story years ago and i don't know if you're going to remember this years ago we had a state conference where president uh, I, um ibanez he, um obviously was leading it and i don't know if he was a counselor or he's already the state president but he told a story of when his uh his his um what do you call it, his forklift or whatever had to go across the ice of a hockey rink do you remember that no, I don't think I don't. I don't remember. So I don't know if you know what President Ibanez does. So for those yeah, who are, he does mm -hmm. what's that? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Explain it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. He does. He does signs. He puts up signs for corporations, and he's got his own business, right? And, and, and all this other stuff. Anyway, so he gets a contract to go put a whole bunch of I don't know, banners or whatever it was, or just something big in a in a hockey stadium, in a hockey rink. And so he shows up there with his forklift, but the only the entrance was on the opposite side where he needed to put up those things so he couldn't go around because there was no other entrance like he was coming in through the um where the zamboni would come through right and so yeah. it was the only door that was wide enough to go through was through that zamboni door and so but the work was across the rink and he could not navigate that big huge massive forklift around so he had yeah. to go through the ice and so he's driving the th truck, the whatever it is, across the ice. And all of a sudden he hears cracks all along the ice. Oh, man. Like, you know, all whatever. And he's like, oh, yeah. my gosh. Like, client's going to get upset. This is not good. And so obviously him being an honest man goes, hey, listen, uh, we kind of like broke your ice, right? Your ice rink. And, and the owner's like, oh, okay, perfect. It goes, good. He goes, what? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, the cracks are only going to make the ice rink stronger. And and he was like, explain. He goes, he goes, well, on purposely, we'll go around and we'll break the ice, and then we'll fill it in with water, and then yeah. that 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 water that gets filled in bonds the ice even more. And so he goes, so when you start to look at. Oh, Sorry, when you start to look at this, uh, this uh, Ether 12, 27, and it says, and if men come unto me and I will show unto them their weaknesses, I have given unto men weaknesses that they may be humble. Like he cracks us so then we can bond with him. And so there is a purpose for these imperfections. There is a purpose that so... We, and then sometimes we take this too much to the left to where we start to chastise them because we're imperfect. But we forget that these are this these are these weaknesses are purposeful so that he can bind us to him, right? And so anyways, so as you're talking and taking your 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 weaknesses to him, it just it increases our 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 bond with him, right? Our connections. And so anyways, that got weird. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, as you're talking about, you know, the Japanese concept of uh, kintsuji, is it kintsuji, where the Japanese, um, so they're in, they're culturally, 
and there's this concept where if there's some type of um, I don't know like pottery thing ceramic thing if it breaks they don't throw it away right they mm. actually put it together and they bond it with gold and they display it and it's it's a metaphor for like embracing the beauty that comes from brokenness and as mm. it gets put back together it actually becomes stronger right mm. so it's i love what you said with regards to the cracks and the present uh presently binding the story because that's and even tied to ether 12.7 because as the experiences in our lives crack us the Lord is there to fill in those cracks mm -hmm. with that old, like just that, just like a kintsugi in the Japanese culture, and they're there to actually make us stronger and to see the beauty within those flaws and those cracks. Because mm -hmm. else, how else would we grow? Like how else would we get better, right? Yeah, and therefore that's how He helps me be perfect, right? Yeah. So by through those cracks and through that pain and through those infirmities. Um, he, he can cleanse me and he, he can perfect me through those things. Yeah. So. See? We should just be able to force everybody to. No, I'm so <laughs> you need force everybody yeah. to live the gospel. I'm just yeah. kidding. There's no forcing in the gospel. <laughs> Heavenly Father values our agency a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, Jennifer Smith here. Hey, Jennifer, uh, longtime listener. She says, There are blessings when you're going through your difficulties. Absolutely. And then uh, Brother Dilt says, um, do you think that our struggles will help us learn more about who Jesus Christ was? Because once we struggle, we can say that we have gone through something that he, he that he went through as well. Ooh, that's, I love that. I, I love know. That that, perspective. Yeah, like that's huge, right? Because this whole thing about struggling, we always think that it's a one-way streak. That he struggles so then he can... So he knows what we went through. But then this is just totally flipping it where we now struggle. So then we know what he went through. Oh my gosh. This just exactly. opens up a new thing, right? Oh my. That's why I love talking about the gospel with other people and having a community. Because of like, we get to learn gems that are incredible like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, huge. That's incredible. That is huge. And, that is and technically that can yoke us with Christ even more because we're like, oh my gosh, he must have felt this way when he was going through it, and I feel horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this just okay. holy stink. Like this just opened up some like a new world to me right now. Yeah, like I've always thought, and I know I we we talked about this before that faith was a two way streak, right? We have faith in him and that everything that he's gone through and then we live a good life that we will, you know, we have faith in Jesus Christ. And when we go through a struggle, he has faith in us knowing that we can get through it. And he allowed these struggles to happen because he has faith. But I never, I never came to this realization that that atonement, um, the, the, the feeling or the concept could potentially be a two way streak as well, that he suffered so then he can know what we're going through and that we're struggling so that we know what he went through as well and which yokes us together right that's huge anyways i love that yeah all right and i think that is that comes to the end of our part oh no um jesus christ uh, humility allows us to see where we need to have God in Jesus Christ. It gives us the opportunity to sync up and l I love that sync up and learn and understand and mold us together. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. There is one, there's one more section here. So, and I, I need, yeah, it, it, I think that's it. no, it says here, Jesus Christ can cleanse me and help me change. Oh, which, yeah, you're right. Which we kind of talked about already, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's so it's so good. Honestly, I just highly, highly encourage you to just spend, like, you don't even have to do it. Think about five-minute actions. I always think about how scripture study can be super overwhelming, yeah. especially if you're not doing it. You can be like, oh, my gosh, but I'm, like, so far behind and I can't do this. Think of it as just five-minute actions. Put on a timer for five minutes, and all you have to do is spend five minutes in your scriptures. And be okay not feeling anything for a while because that's just part of the journey sometimes. Yeah. And then sometimes we have that expectation that we'll feel spiritual right away when as I don't feel spiritual all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I go through my peaks and valleys. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing here, right? And even even in my calling in my position, it's like sometimes there is 
there's just expectations that I should be performing at a catable cat caliber caliber no caliber high cal caliber yeah, yeah high, caliber. high caliber level and it's just like I'm I'm just human right like I, I yeah I, I'm I'm not I'm not the new messiah like this I'm just a guy trying to fulfill magnify his calling and I will make mistakes right and so some people give me grace and but it's been cool like I've, I've learned a lot actually you're talking about the youth activity we had a really neat experience and 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 just looking at these comments and looking at what happened something very sweet came or happened we're playing dodgeball roulette do you know what that is Mm -mm. okay sounds fun though it, it is oh i'm telling i'm gonna let you know what the activity is so then you can do it with your youth i'm telling you you're going to have an absolute blast of a time okay. so dodgeball roulette is very very simple you take a uh you you make a circle right with all the youth and in the center you put a dodgeball and then there's a bottle and you spin the bottle and okay. wh wherever the bottle lands to whomever it lands to everybody else runs and the person where the bottle lands to they grab the dodgeball and tries to pin somebody tries to hit somebody right now yeah. this it's it's a it's a game that went viral they normally you don't play with the dodgeball you play with eggs right and no, <laughs> no, no one wants to get hit time. no i know nobody wants to get hit with an egg and it hurts like when it hits your back and it cracks oh my gosh right so but we're not going to waste eggs so we're playing with the dodgeball so we spin the bottle it lands on you Everybody else takes off from all different directions. A bunch of cockroaches, right? And just like, and then you run to the center, grab the ball, and you find somebody, and then you throw it and you try and pin it. And then, so we didn't want to do elimination because we didn't want kids just sitting off to the side watching everybody else play. So we did, uh, we did pig. So uh, if you get hit, you get a letter, P, then I, then G, right? Okay. If if you miss, you get a letter. So if the bottle lands on me and I throw it and it misses, then I get the letter P and then whoever. And then anyways, so the consequences is that if you get that, if your actions, you get if you get pinned or you miss and you spell out the word pig, you have to go to the center of the circle and you have to do 10 pushups. Right. <laughs> but here, here's the thing is, right. And you, you're not doing it alone. You actually have to call somebody. And do the push-ups with you. And the only person that you can't call is the last person who pinned you. That's right? Awesome. It is. And we had, I'm telling you right now, we had an absolute blast of the time. But there was this one girl, and she got pinned. She, you know, pig, P-I-G. And she called somebody, and this other person didn't want to. Was super shy, super embarrassed, and just did not want to. Then we had this one young woman. Um no no it was the other way around so she she didn't want to do it she was like i don't want to do it you know i'm weak and whatever and so she didn't want to go in the center and everything and then out of nowhere this other young woman comes in uh and she's like you know what she goes i'll do it with you come let's do it together and then she went on her knees and they started doing and when she did the other girl that lost she went on she went down as well and they started doing push-ups and we're all like cheering and then whatever but looking back at all of this it was such a sweet moment where she didn't want to do it she didn't want to go through the pain and whatever and then because of the strength of this other young woman said like hey you know i'll do it with you it gave her strength to actually go and do something impossible so just mm -hmm. the the sweetness of having someone there with you right it gives you that extra strength that i can i can do it right it was yeah. Yeah, I didn't think about it now, but going through this lesson, just it really, it was a very sweet moment that day. So, ah, oh, such a, and I'm like, that's why we are asked to come to church, right? To build a mm. community, yeah. to have those people, and to be open, and to ask for help, and to get outside of our comfort zone, and to be there for other people, right? Yeah. It, the gospel is so much easier living it with other people. That's why I always, even in my ward, I always encourage the youth to go to all activities. Because, yes, are Sundays the most important? Absolutely. But what actually sometimes makes it easier to live the gospel is having relationships and friendships and people who understand what you're going through in a day to day basis. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. That brings us to the end of our Come Follow With Us. What an amazing, amazing podcast today. I 
did not expect to get this emotional. I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was gonna be a sweet one, but I just did not think it was gonna be like a like a full out roller coaster ride for me. I'm I'm like all the feels, eh? <laughs> yeah, today today was a very tender one. So I'm uh, I'm grateful for it. So what was what was your nugget? What was your gem? As a, as the seminary kids, uh, it's called in seminary. What's the gem? What's the takeaway that you got today? I just enjoyed going through hymns. You know, and like mm. listening to what your favorite parts are and then just kind of talking about what my favorite parts are. And it's just such a power in music. Mm. And so I'm like, I think I need to do more of that. I need to listen to more gospel. I do listen to the gospel, um, to the youth albums, but I'm like, I need to ha do that more in my life. So yeah. I think that was my biggest takeaway. What about okay. you? With what Rob said. Um, oh, yes, 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 the, yes. I that, that really, that really... Uh, um resonated yeah, not just yeah but just like i'm all about learning new things and sometimes when we're reading the gospel you know that you know it already right and i mean I, i've been a member for a long time since i was eight right and i'm 45 now so i've i've heard i don't want to say i've heard it all but you know i've i've i've, I've heard much i've learned much not everything, right? But I, I have. And so I always get excited when I learn something new that I've never learned before. And and for me, this was a big, huge, massive aha moment that, yeah, maybe one of the reasons why we struggle or one of the things, one of the benefits of why we struggle is that we know what he went through and it just bonds us together. Like that just blew my mind. It opened up a new, uh, new category of the atonement for me that I didn't even think was possible. So that it was a huge... That for me, that was it. I think it's the aspect too that it humanizes um, Jesus Christ because we think of him always as the Son of God. Yeah. But I'm like, he, he like he was also just like us. Yeah. Right. He experienced all these things, so I love that too. President. Anyway, pre President. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no. President Hunter talks about that too, right? Is that we have to take that that Satan? I had this quote written on my on the inside of my scriptures when I was a youth, and I would read it all the time. Uh, I, I kind of memorized it, and he said, uh, "Satan, Satan may have the, Satan may have lost the battle of leading uh, with Satan lost the battle with Christ, and he knows it, but he doesn't believe that he has the he has lost the battle with us. He continues to taunt, taunt, and plead for our loyalty. We need to take strength from the fact that Christ was was victorious not as a god but as a man." And so when we know that he was able to defeat the adversary as a man, uh, it gives us hope to be able to do the same. Yeah. So, yeah. well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for following us. Thank you so much for uh, following with us. And, uh, and we love you and appreciate you. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe this, uh, the, this podcast because uh, if, it, if it did something for you, it may do something for others. And then we invite you to uh, to come back and watch the um, from vision to success this Monday, where, where we will be announcing the uh, the winner as well. And that's not a faith based; that's more a personal progress uh, and and just uh, yeah, human behavior and stuff like that. So we're super excited for that. Absolutely. All right. Have a wonderful week and a wonderful Sabbath, and most importantly, a wonderful Easter. Absolutely. Take care, guys. Bye. Have a good one.